let's let's just start off from scratch. So one of the things that you it, 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 one of the things in in publishing is understanding some of the industry terms. And even though we may be self publishing or whatever, it's still important to know. So you can just start off with I am a fiction writer. Okay, so that just kind of defines who you are, and that that also will get the uh, generative system into the right area of its training data. I would like to know the difference between a developmental editor and a copy editor and a line editor, and you explain it to me in terms a teenager can understand. So the developmental editor helps with the big story ideas. The line editor makes it read smoothly and the copy editor checks for mistakes, right? And that's a really decent summary, okay? Now, you can use the generative AIs to give you some help with regards to these. So one of the, one of the, one of the good ideas that you can do is you can take this and you can say, okay, say, I would like to get some feedback on my fictional work in progress. It is a pulp fiction novel that is set in 1930s New York City with a very light touch of magic realism that in the real world, it should be like a combination of Dick Tracy and I don't know if it knows X Files. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do X Files. We'll we'll just see if that happens. Please create a prompt to get feedback on my novel for a developmental editor. Yeah, right, let's see what, let's see what it comes back with. So this it's actually coming back with a pretty extensive prompt. Let's see what we got. Pulp Fiction set in the bustling streets of 1930s New York City. Atmosphere is reminiscent of Dick Tracy with a gritty, fast-paced world, detectives and criminals. However, there's a twist. Subtle on the currents of magic realism akin to the mysterious and unexplained phenomena of the X-Files. Okay, so it does know X-Files. That's good. Plot structure. Does the story have clear beginning, middle, and end? Character development, pacing, tone. Please provide detailed things. So this is not a bad prompt. So what I could do to test this prompt is I'll come over here. And we'll just go over here to, let's see here. I'm going to have to use Claude because it's, I'm going to feed it the full length novel. So now let's just pop over here to text editor so I can assemble this. Please read the manuscript, which is a Pulp Fiction novel set in Bustle Chase. Key elements to review. Okay. And now I'll just grab the manuscript. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. Let's just give this a spin and see what what we get back from Claude. So let's see, what, let's see here. Plot structure, the overall plot structure is strong with a clear beginning, middle and end. The exciting incident when Ethan receives the coded message from the dying Dr. Russell propels the rest of the events. The rising action tension as Ethan tries to decipher the message and evade Lady Rollins' thugs. Climax occurs when Ethan raids the warehouse and arrests Rollins. The falling action closure by having Ethan return the camera to the ending could be made more definitive. Does Ethan fully resolve his role in the case? So there's a little bit of developmental letter feedback. Okay, I didn't quite close it out very strongly. Ethan's a standout character with his hard-boiled detective persona. Lady Rollins is intriguing, mysterious, femme fatale. More background on her can make her more her motivations clearer. Supporting characters are vivid but could use more development. For example, how does decoding the message align with this character? Pacing, action sequence have an excellent momentum to assume some transitional scenes. The warehouse climax is the high point of tension. Additional stakes in the falling action can maintain momentum. Oh, that's not nice. another thing. Strong integration. The subtle magic elements blend seamlessly into the world through Lady Rollins and the gargoyles. More details on the gargoyles' mythos could enrich the world building. Where do they originate? Hardboiled tone shines through. Lady Rollins' main theme. As you can see, this this one this particular book actually came out fairly strong, but that's because this one's actually published ready. This one's actually ready for me to hit the publish button. I've been through all the various pieces. I actually use Claude a lot for this. So let's go over here, Claude, and just say, here's a fun prompt. Are there any reader promises made that are not fulfilled by the end of the book? 
And for those of you who are saying reader promises, what are those? Reader promises are any time you mention a character's backstory, but don't actually explain it. Or any time you hint at another event, or maybe there's another crime, or possibly there's an ancient artifact that has a, a mysterious story past, or there was a character that just came in and left. Has anyone here not seen Glass Onion, the movie? I'm sorry. This really might be much of a spoiler. But for everyone who's seen the movie Glass Onion, you know that character, I think, I'm trying to remember his name, I think his name is Doug, but basically the pothead who walks through seven different, he just walks through, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm here, and then walks out. And you, and you even have one scene where the detective is sitting in his, his little apartment while he's smoking some weed and they're having a conversation. That character is never explained, never resolved, and in fact, the, when the character first walks through, the, uh, the, 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 when the other character was like, oh, that's Doug, ignore him. He's just here. Daryl, right? Okay, Daryl, yeah. The, that's just Daryl, ignore him, right? That's the first thing they say about it. And he still comes, he walks through these scenes. He's just like a, he's like a homeless hippie or something. Never explained. And that little tidbit has, Pissed off a lot of people because that's a reader promise. In this case, a movie promise, because it's like, what is the deal with Daryl? Why the heck is he even there? What is his purpose in the movie? His purpose in the movie is to be ignored. That is literally his purpose. But it also counts as a reader promise made that isn't completely fulfilled. That's probably the best example I've got of an unfulfilled reader promise. One of the other things is, is if you write, if you pants, pantsers tend to drop a lot of reader promises. I know a lot of series that I just love to death where there was something that was introduced. It was like five or six paragraphs. It was amazingly interesting. And there was like, okay, we'll get back to that or let's set that aside. And then the author completely forgot about it. Three books later, it's like, it's, it's never been mentioned again. So that, that was a very large disappointment to yours truly. And also I'm sure to others, cause I'm representative of every, every single person is representative of at least a couple hundred others. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you show a gun to the scene, someone had better grab it, right? Exactly. So right here, deciphering the coded message. This is set up as a big mystery early on with Ethan and trust the message to Father Grady. However, we never get the full details on the message, what the message contained, even after Ethan recovers the gargoyles, providing more closure on the content. Now, yeah. interestingly enough, that is true. And this is, I have actually run this book multiple times through a developmental editor column. And this is the first time it's mentioned this. And now that I'm thinking about it, that's actually not a bad idea. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go back and fix this book because I'm, you can constantly ask these things for this information. I'm, I'm Leland Hartru. Thanks for watching this all the way to the very end. Deeply appreciate that. Hopefully you found some golden nuggets in this for you. This is an example of a future fiction academy lab content details where we talked about development editing and a number of other things. We do these labs eight times a week and they're always live. So where the lab goes is generally also guided by not just the initial topic, but any particular uh, membership uh, questions that come up. If you enjoyed this video, hopefully you'll hit the subscribe and ring the bell because that's a way to support us and our continuing efforts to uh, help authors use generative AI and other fantastic new tools as they come available. If you really enjoyed this video, you might enjoy some of the other videos we have. There's going to be a link over there or there. And there's definitely some links in the comments down below in the description. If you want to find out more about what's going on with Future Fiction Academy and maybe see this entire lab, come on over to the Future Fiction Academy. The links is in the description below. And hopefully we'll see you there. In the meantime, have a great day. And I hope you enjoy yourself. Thank you very much. Jazz hands.